The National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations present The Pacific Story. This is the story of the Pacific, the drama of the millions of people who live around this greatest sea where the United States is now committed to a long-term policy of keeping the peace. This is a documentary account of the situation in the Pacific, of the men and events which are today influencing world affairs for generations to come. The Japanese and the soil. After years of holding many farmers almost in slavery, the Japanese land tenancy system is on its way out. I do not understand. It means, my father, that we will have land of our own and that we can work it for ourselves. We will not have to divide our crop with our landlords. That is right. Hmm. How could we ever pay for land? We would have 30 years to pay for it. How can it be? We have never owned land nor have any of our ancestors. Of Japan's 5,500,000 farm households, only about 1,700,000 own all their land. About 2,300,000 own no land. Nearly 4 million are tenant farmers. The Americans are changing things now, my father. The land is to be bought from the landlords by the government and is to be sold to us. And we will have 30 years to pay for it. How can this be? Until now, 70% of the Japanese peasants have been either partially or wholly tenant farmers, with less than three acres on which to eke out a living. They have had little voice in the course taken by the warlords. Their sons have been taken by the armed services. Their daughters have worked in the fields or in the industries. Despite the rapid industrialization of the last quarter of a century or so, Japan is still an agrarian nation. The people are tied to the soil. This is an American agricultural expert. Agriculture is the foundation of Japanese economy. To Jun Kusaku, the landless Japanese tenant farmer, the prospect of land reform is almost bewildering. Do you mean that we can raise food to eat and that we can sell what we do not need? Yes, my father. We will have to pay taxes and buy fertilizer and tools and clothing and the other things we need, but this we can do for ourselves when we have our own land. When will this happen? The steps are being taken now. The Americans have ordered all governments to work out... For years, Japan has been divided into tiny farms, most of them averaging a very few acres. These tiny farms, small as they are, have been divided into endless, minute parcels of ownership. Thus, there are many owners of land. But about 20% of the landowners do not work their land. This 20%, which numbers about a million landowners, live on the income from their rents. And although most of these landlords own less than seven acres apiece, still they can live on their rents. The reason is the land rents have been so high. This is the son of Jun Kusaku. For years, we have had to give 56% of our total crops. This is the average land rent of two crop lands. The land rents vary, but they are all extortionate. This is an American expert. On single crop paddy land, the rent is usually 51% of the total yield. On non-paddy land, the rent ranges from 28 to 40 percent. Most of the rents are paid in kind. The peasants see very little cash. When they can pay in cash, the rent is slightly lower. Ask Jun Kosako how much money he clears a year. If or we have good fortune, we can clear something less than $20 a year. <laughs> Some rentals are paid in wheat, soybeans, and millet, in addition to rice. And sometimes payments are made in other ways. Uh, I will pay the rental in labor. I offer you the labor of all the members of my family. We will work off the rent. Uh, very well. I will stipulate the amount of labor to be done. Could you tell me 
How much labor there will be? The same as last year. It must be remembered that I am paying all the taxes and land assessments and all the other fees that uh, come along. Oh, yes. tenancy system has been in force in Japan for many years. While there are many who own land, since the parcels of land are so small, the vast preponderance of peasants are tenants. There are two general kinds of tenants. First, there are the Jun Kasaku, the true landless peasants. There are something like 2,300,000 households of these who depend entirely on land hired from others. In generations, these Jun Kasaku have not been able to acquire one square inch of land. Then there are those called the Jisaku Konkusaku, those that are part owner, part tenant. There are something like 1,500,000 households of these peasants who own very small parcels of land but must rent additional parcels in order to make a living. So these, like those who are completely landless, are also tenants. These two classes of peasants constitute 70% of the agricultural households of Japan. And until now, this vast majority of the farmers of Japan have been beholden to landlords. Jun Kasako remembers what happens when the rent is not paid. Ah, uh, Jun Kasako, uh, this is the second time you have been here on this matter, is it not? Uh, yes. We agreed on a rental you all, plus the interest in uh, terms of cash. And you gave me a promissory note. Did you not? Oh, yes, I gave you the note. We have had a bad year, as you know, and my family has had trouble. I and... cannot have a tenant on my land who does not pay. My ancestors for generations before me have always paid the rental to your family. And until now, I have paid it. That has nothing to do with the matter at hand. If the rental is not paid, then I must end your tenancy. Oh, no. No, where could I find land? No genoshi in this region would rent you around. We must have enough food to live. I must insist that you pay the metal you have agreed to pay. I will give you until the end of the season. If it is not paid then, I must take your standing crops and end your tenancy. Against this kind of action, in which the landlords acted collectively against the tenants, the tenants have taken concerted action against the landlords. Until the dispute is settled, we will not pay the rent. Nor will we give up the land. We will store our rice together, all of us. And if the landlords will not try to settle a dispute with us, we will sell the rights. The whole matter will then be placed in the hands of the law. But even with these measures, the strength of the tenants against the landlords was slight. For this reason, the farmers of Japan have for years been moving together. An important joint movement took place after World War I, during which time the landlords expanded their holdings. In World War I, Japan was on the Allied side. Her industry boomed. Prices rose, and the landlords, taking advantage of the rise in the price of rice, which was grown for them by their tenants, had the means to buy more land. And this they did. So the position of the landlords improved, while the position of the tenants deteriorated. By 1922, there were more landless tenants than ever before. And that was the year the Japan Farmers Union was formed. Until now, we have had a tenant movement. Now... Under the Japan Farmers Union, our objective must be to improve the lot of all peasants. Many groups of tenants joined the Japan Farmers Union. And by this time, in the early 20s, the problems of farm tenancy were coming up at almost every session of the Imperial Diet in Tokyo. It is becoming apparent that His Majesty's government must take a more active part in the matter of farm tenancy. This was the government's view. We therefore enunciate the following general policy. First, the government will arbitrate the disputes of the tenants. Second, we will undertake a program of loans at low interest to tenant farmers to enable them to buy land in order that they may cease to be tenants. And third... We will undertake to restrict certain arbitrary practices of the landlords and in this way improve the conditions of the tenant farmer. Implementing this policy, the Japanese government started making loans to tenant farmers to help them buy land. But in the first four years, only negligible progress was made. This made grist for the mill of the farmers' union. By 1925, the farmers were strong enough to help found a political party. With the formation of the Farmer Labor Party, 
We have taken a great step toward expressing a voice in the affairs of our country. Long live the farmer labor party! With a party, we shall now be in a position... Uh, excuse to... me, please. Excuse me. Uh, yes? Uh, I have a message for you. Yes? Uh, uh, no, no, no. I, I cannot believe it. It is impossible. No, no. That is the message exactly as the Home Minister related to us. This is illegal. This cannot be done. Will you announce it? Uh, yes. Uh, a message has just come from the Home Minister. The Home Minister has ordered the Farmer Labor Party dissolved. We have been organized only three hours. If the Home Minister has dissolved the Farmer Labor Party, then we have no party. The government then launched an expanded program to help the tenant farmer. It is our purpose to conceive of this plan as long range, and it is therefore set up for a period of 25 years. The government will help tenant farmers by 286,650 acres of land. The aim was to increase the number of owner cultivators. In addition, steps have been taken to help the owner cultivator in terms of taxes. Certain holdings will be exempt from the national land tax. But this expanded program could not halt the tenant farmers from becoming politically conscious. The agrarian movement continued. And in 1928, the powerful but Japan Farmers Union and the All Japan Farmers Union joined forces and became the National Farmers Union, which was to be known as Zeno. During this period, the farm troubles did not decrease. In fact, they increased. Nevertheless, it was plain that the tenant farmers were floundering toward some kind of solution. Despite the government's program to help the tenant farmer become an owner-cultivator, in the 10 years from 1926 to 1936, the number of tenant farmers increased and the number of owner-cultivators decreased. The government's handling of the whole problem of land tenancy has been ineffective. How could we prevent the small landholders from becoming a tenant farmer as the plan was set up? The plan was not practical. If subsidizing tenant farmers to buy land is not practical... The truth is that we have too many farmers. Everyone knows that. That is the real problem. If we could become more industrialized, then we could put many of the tenant farmers to work in the factories. This would leave fewer farmers on the land. Therefore, each farmer would have more land to work. But industrialization, that is another thing. Oh, yes, it is indeed. If we do not get more industrialization, then we must reorganize our entire system of land tenancy. That is what we have been trying to do. But not effectively. The system must be modernized. It can no longer be operated as it was in the Middle Ages. What do you mean when you say modern art? I mean that if necessary, we must expropriate all unused farm lands. What? Yes, we must redivide these lands. The lands of the absentee landlords and the non-cultivating owners must be put into the hands of the active farmers who work the land. And the extortionate rentals must be reduced. But now it was 1938. Japan was well launched on its policy of aggression. She had invaded and occupied Manchuria. She had attacked China proper, had taken Shanghai, Beijing, and Nanking. She was engaged in a full-scale war on the mainland of Asia, and at the same time was preparing for her eventual drive to the south. The Japanese government was in the hands of tough militarists, whose plans encompassed no talk of rights from the farmers. You will stay on your land, and you will forgot. That is your responsibility. The pressure against the farmers increased. Tokyo. Official announcement was made here today that the powerful organization known as Zeno has liquidated. Zeno, or more properly, the National Farmers Union, was the largest organization of farmers Japan had ever had. Zeno, which had fought the reform of the land tenancy system, had been in existence ten years. And with its dissolution, the farmers of Japan are now left with no national organization to represent them. What will we do now? Oh, we still have our small group. What could I be? What my father means 
is that the problems that we face, nearly all farmers face. And if we have only local organizations, there seems to be little we can do. We must join together our small groups and form new national organizations. Yes, yes, but how can we do this? Yes, how can we? With those who are making the walls holding us down. We cannot give up. We will not give up. The smaller groups started moving together again. And out of this movement emerged two new national groups. The Great Japan Farmers Union and the Japan Farmers League. I am glad to tell you that in our new organization of the Great Japan Farmers Union, we now have 70,000 members. And presently, the other group, the Japan Farmers League, announced that it also had 70,000 members. 70,000 members? Perhaps now we can do something. Yes. Maybe now they will help us buy land. Instead, the two new farmer leagues found that they had stronger opposition than ever before. Those in power frowned upon them. For Japan at this time was riding toward the crest of her wave. France had fallen. And as an echo of this, the Japanese had moved into French Indochina. The Japanese were preparing for the showdown that they knew was coming in the Pacific. His Majesty's government announces that, in the interest of national unity, both the Great Japan Farmers Union and the Japan Farmers League have voluntarily dissolved. Effective at once, these organizations no longer exist. In place of their organization, another organization, supported by the government, was imposed upon the farmers. The Imperial Agricultural Association. We are better off with no organization. This will only keep us working on the land for the benefit of others. If war comes with America, my father, then there is no hope for us. There is no way we can escape it, my son. The sons of the farmers were taken for the armed services, the daughters to be workers. The older farmers were left on the land. And there they worked, as the farmers of Japan have worked for hundreds of years. They worked throughout the war years. And when the war ended, they were worse off than ever before. Among the first objectives of Allied headquarters after the occupation of Japan was the breaking up of the system of land tenancy. On November 12, 1945, General MacArthur announced that he was preparing a directive to free Japan's millions of farmers from their bondage. And in his statement, MacArthur promised free marketing and a state of freedom, and summed it up by saying, As the day-by-day -day story of occupation unfolds, it must now be understood that the primary objective of the occupation forces is to destroy the old system, exact toil for past misdeeds, and create a nation of people who will forever retain a democratic way of life. The next day, the directive was issued. The Japanese government will submit all plans for dealing with farm tenancy, farm loans, rents, taxes, and the cost of farm supplies. Also, the Japanese government will report an effective plan for the redistribution of land. In the back country, Jun Kosaku and the other tenants looked on. Uh, will the Americans make a new land law? No. Oh, the Americans have ordered the Imperial Diet to make a new land law. Oh. Will they do it? They must do it. When must the Diet do this? The Diet will meet in a few days now. Oh. What will the new land law say? Oh, I do not know. But it will have to say something about buying the land from the large holders and selling it to us. That is what our government tried to do. A measure was introduced in the Diet to alter the land tenancy system. But Supreme Allied Headquarters found it inadequate. The measure proposes the purchase of land from large estates and the reclamation of other land for redistribution to tenant farmers. But it leaves the system of absentee land ownership as it was. The Japanese tenant must be freed from the bondage of feudal absentee land ownership, from the mountain of debt, from discriminatory taxation, and from the other economic ills that have oppressed him for centuries. The agricultural experts of Supreme Allied Headquarters studied the proposed Japanese measure. Then a new directive to the Diet was issued. 
The Japanese government will submit to Supreme Allied Headquarters by March 15, 1946, a program of agricultural reform with the following measures. First, the transfer of land from absentee owners to land operators. Second, provision for the purchase of farm lands from non-operating owners at fair prices. Third, provision for the tenant to buy land in annual installments in keeping with his income. Fourth, provision for reasonable protection of former tenants against reversion to their old status as tenants. The members of the Japanese government mulled over the directive. In it, they saw the end of the system that had obtained for ten centuries. Mm. It even stipulates that measures must be enacted to protect the farmers against exploitation by processors and distributors. Oh, that we cannot do. That we will have no choice. We made great concessions in the measure we were considering when this directive came. That is your belief because, if I may say so, you are an extensive landholder. What we have is legally ours. But you remember what General MacArthur said. He said that the purpose of the objective was to destroy the forces that have enslaved the Japanese farmer for centuries of feudal oppression and to establish a system ensuring that those who till the soil shall have a more equal opportunity to enjoy the fruits of their labor. That is what MacArthur said. Yes, yes, I know, I know. But the farmers have always managed to get along. That is no longer enough. That is why General MacArthur said that the farmer cannot be freed until the evils of our system have been rooted out. What evils? Well, here are the ones that General MacArthur has listed. Oh, what must I Right here. See? Sure. Oh. The heavy burden of farm indebtedness with high rates of interest. Sir. They are government policy that discriminates against agriculture in favor of industry and trade. Yes, yes. And uh, this one, the autocratic government control over the farmer and farm organizations without regard for the farmer's interest. I do not know that the government has been autocratic. It forced the dissolution of the farmer's league, did it not? That was for the good of the country. Well... At any rate, this is the directive of Supreme Allied Headquarters. And any law we enact must conform to it. Meantime, the question of how much acreage landholders should be permitted to own came to the front. At present, about one-third of the Japanese farmers cultivate 1.25 acres or less. About one-third cultivate between 1.25 acres and 2.45 acres. This means that two-thirds of the land holdings are exceedingly small. In the Allied Council for Japan, recommendations were made by the various members. If the recommendations of the holders be allowed to retain 7.35 acres prevails, then few tenants will ever become landholders. On this basis, there simply is not enough land to go around. Likewise, there were differences of opinion as to how the land shall be taken over. I recommend that all holdings exceeding 15 acres be seized without remuneration. This was the Russian proposal. Further, I recommend that the Japanese government pay the full rate for the first eight acres and half the price for the second eight acres and nothing whatever for the expropriated land. With this suggestion, the American member disagreed. I submit the opinion that expropriation of land or other property without due payment is not in accord with the principles of the Potsdam Declaration. These recommendations are not in accord with the principles of reviving and strengthening democratic tendencies among the Japanese people because they are not in accord with democratic principles. The American member went on that certain men are rich in property is no justification for depriving them of the property without compensation. To deprive certain men of their property without payment would be to deprive all men of the security of ownership and to deprive the Japanese peasant and small farmer of his rightful security, which we are endeavoring to establish. Mr. Chairman, I, I regret that I am unable to concur in the interpretation put upon this matter by the American delegate. 
I therefore resubmit my plan for expropriation of all land holdings above 15 acres without remuneration. I should like to ask the Chinese and British members if they consider this democratic. No. Expropriation is not democratic. I'm afraid I must agree with the Chinese member and the American member that this is not democratic. The Japanese diet that had enacted the unsatisfactory land law was dissolved. A new diet or parliament was elected under the democratic procedures ordered by Supreme Headquarters. The new diet went into session in what was to be the longest session in the history of Japan. A new constitution was adopted. A new land law was adopted. My father. My father. Hmm? You are excited, my son. That is not good. Oh, I am to be on the village board. The village land board. The land board? Yes. Oh, that. Oh, it is good, my father. There will be landholders and tenants on the board, and we will decide how much land each tenant can buy. Hmm. Is the same old story over again? Oh, no, no, my father. This time we will be helped to buy. It is the law. I have heard this talk all the years of my life. No, no, no. It is really the law. The land of the absentee owners is to be bought by the government and sold to us. Do not be deceived, my son. It will be as it always has been. Oh, it is different this time, father. At last, we can own the land, and we will be limited only by what the board says in the village. It is the law passed by the Diet, and the Americans are standing behind it. I... I did not think I would ever see this day. The terms of the land reform law are explicit. The law makes available 4,900,000 acres for purchase through the Japanese government by tenant farmers. This will embrace about two-thirds of the farm acreage now being rented. The land will be paid for with government bonds, and it is planned to sell it to about three million tenant farmers. This will make owner cultivators of these three million farmers, and they will be given 30 years to pay for the land. Today, under the direction of the Supreme Command of the Allies in the Pacific, the feudal land system is, in fact, being torn out by the roots. The Japanese government, under orders, to guarantee to agriculture a share of the national income commensurate with its contribution, has been warned that it will be held strictly to account for the final accomplishment of the broad aims of the Allied Directive. The Japanese land tenancy system is on its way out. The tenant farmer, for years virtually chained to the soil that was not his, will within the next few years emerge a free man working for himself. With ten centuries of bondage behind him, he looks ahead, conscious of all the problems that face him and his nation, but with an inkling for the first time of the meaning of democracy. listening to The Pacific Story, presented by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations, to clarify events in the Pacific and to make understandable the cross-currents of life in the Pacific Basin. is written and produced by Arnold Marquis. The music was scored and conducted by Henry Russell, your narrator, Jane Whitman. Programs in this series of particular interest to servicemen and women are broadcast overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This program came to you from Hollywood and was heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.